Listen, I am so happy to have you back in the Self-Worth Masterclass. I am Nathan Salter. I am here to help you overcome this self-worth deficit that you are struggling with. My job is to let you see that you have self-worth. You have a lot of value. And in this particular class, we are going to talk about the cause of why you having some self-worth issues in your life. All right. So I was sharing with you in the introduction a little bit about my past and a little bit about that friend that came into my life when I was in grade school, getting ready to go to eighth grade and how this friend literally changed the direction of my teenage years. And I tell you right now, your friends have a huge, uh, th- your friends has a huge influence on you, whether you want to believe it or not. So you got to be very wise on the friends that you choose. All right. So let me get into uh, this one. Let's talk about the cause of, of the self-worth problem that you're having. All right. The cause is you got to go back and find out what is it that's making you not like yourself? What is making you uh, feel like you don't have any worth? All right. Now that sounds simple. There's two words I want to bring into the cause because once you under, understand these two words, everything else makes sense. The two words that is the cause of all of this is you have a lack of identity and a lack of significance, lack of identity and lack of significance. Now, the significance, the lack of significance, I want to start with that because I can tell you right now, the lack of significance is your perception. It's your perception. You feel like you are not significant, the lack of significance. So, If you can find that you are very significant, if you can find your significance, if you can see that you have something to bring to the table, it changes how you see yourself. Okay, your identity is connected to that. So identity and significance is the cause of why many people have a level of lack of self-worth in their life. So for me, the reason why I was so easily influenced by that friend who took me on a long, crazy ride in my teenage years is because I had a lack of significance. All I was focused on is what I did not like about myself, which was, I shared with you in the introduction, was the fact that I had um, some gaps in my teeth and I before I got them fixed, and I didn't like that. And that began to start the the low self-esteem portion in my life. I got so preoccupied by that that I just completely didn't even re- realize that I had something to bring, I, that there were some good things about me. I was so busy on the thing I didn't like that I couldn't look at all the other things that I did have going good for me. And that is where a lot of times we get ourselves caught up in comparing ourselves. So I'm just going to let you know those two words, significance and identity is the cause to your self-worth problem. And so I am here to tell you right now, you got to get yourself around people who can see your significance. Now, the reason why I gravitated to my friend is because I felt a level of significance around him. It was something he could have been around anybody, but for some reason, he would be the one to call me. He would come to my house before school. He would, uh, you know, want me to sit next to him on the bus. He would want me to uh, do the bad things with him. So I felt like, hey, he sees something in me that I don't see. That made me feel significant. And a lot of young people today, you are in with the wrong crowd for a lack of significance. You are looking for significance. You are trying to find a place where you fit in. You're looking for a place of where you can be validated. And this is where the root cause of it comes from. So um, once you find that, you start to realize that you don't really need the approval of other people because you know what your significance is. So in my story, uh, what began to happen was as I began to start hanging with my friend, I, I've always been a silly guy. I always loved to laugh and have fun. However, it's just that I wasn't comfortable with people based on what I told you in the introduction about um, how I, my teeth used to be. And so what I realized is that when I started seeing that because I started becoming popular when I was hanging with this friend, I then start to discover that, hey, there's some significance. Whatever I'm doing is working, like I said before. And then all of a sudden I started becoming popular. So in eighth grade, I became very popular, one of the most popular guys in my eighth grade class. And it was in that moment that I said, I'm not going back to that other reality. 
I'm not going back to that other reality of being the, the young man who, who, who gets straight A's, but nobody know who he is. That young man who's, who do his homework, but then go to school and get bullied. I don't want that reality. The reality I want is the reality that, hey, you know, the girls know my name. The guys respect me. Um, I don't have to worry about being bullied. If somebody did try to do something with me, I got some boys that can, that will fight with me. All of that was connected to my significance. And I got to the place where I said, listen, I'm willing to lose my family. I'm willing for my mother to kick me out of the house. I'm willing to, to, I don't care the people who really love me. I don't care what they think. Long as I get this need of significance met in my life, I'm good. So my cause for what I was really trying to feel is I was trying to get that that need of significance met. And this friend, though he was the wrong influence, came in my life and met that need. And this is what led me to begin to really act wild. When I went into high school, I did my grades went completely down from I used to be a, almost an A student. And I went down to the point where I was just getting 65, 67, maybe a couple of 70s, because I was just at school just to chase girls, just to make people laugh, just to make the teachers lose their lose their mind. Uh, study, uh, uh, you know, after school, I mean, I'm sorry, detention was like my, my second class. <laughs> I was in detention so much because of my behavior. And I was doing all of that so I can feel significant. So now you can see that a lot of the people that you may be admiring and saying, oh man, they popular. I promise you behind all that cockiness and pride and all that. And for the, for the young ladies, all the girls who seem like she, you know, she real loud and you like, man, she, she getting all the boys. Listen, I'm telling you behind, sometimes behind all of that is a lack of self worth is a lack. I got to do this to be significant. So you got to know that what you see that people are doing to seem like they're getting all the attention. It is really a lack of significance. So now let me tell you uh, something about the young man that that used to um, that I was telling you about my friend. Um, one time I used I remember saying to him as we got real comfortable in our relationship, I said, hey, man, let me, um, you know, let me let's go to your house and, and let's play video games at your house. And I remember, no, no, man, we'll go to your house. And he always kept he never wanted nobody to go to his house. And I'm just like, well, you know man, you know, okay, cool. You know, you can come to my house. But that always stuck in my mind. And he was very, I mean, he was the type that would rib on you, joke on you. Um, he, he was just very bold, like just that, just that, that hood, you know, and just always, and, and everybody loved it. Everybody respected. I mean, he was the type that would walk up to you and just punch you right in the face and don't even know you, you know, and he was just that type. And I'm wondering like, man, how did he get like that? You know, and I'm like, what is it? And so I remember one time um, I, I saw on his bus pass where he lived. And I remember one day I was like, you know, I'm just going to, um, you know, go to his house and I am going to like, you know, before we go to the bus stop, I'm instead of him coming here, I'm just going to go there. I remember one day I went to his bus stop. I went to his house. And when I saw his house, I mean, it wasn't the best living condition. And I remember when I knocked on the door, the side door, I would never forget this picture. Um, his, um, this lady, this very real heavy lady came to the door. I mean, she had to be, um, a couple, a couple of hundreds of pounds. I mean, very heavy. It looked like she was very sick and ill. And she came to the door and I said, um, hi, ma'am. I'm here to pick up. Um, I won't say my friend's name. I said, I'm here to pick up my friend. And, the way she looked at me was like, oh, okay. And she closed the door and my friend comes out. Now, when she opened the door, I saw that the place was not very well kept. Uh, the place had a lot of things going on in there. I'm not going to get into that. But I remember my friend came out of the door and he literally cursed me out. Yo, don't ever come to my blank, 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 blank house again. And he was just so mad at me. And I was like, yo, what was wrong? Why would, why were you, why did you have a problem with me coming to your house? And he was like, man, no, you, you, don't come until I tell you. He was really that bully type. And I remember later on, one time he was breaking on me. He was taking, you know, kind of trying to embarrass me by jokes and things like that. And because I started getting comfortable and a little more feeling a little more value, I remember I said something to him and I said something about his house and what I saw. And y'all, I am telling you, yo, it was like, he felt so humiliated. This guy in school 
who's doing all the bullying, who's doing all of the um, getting all the significance and feeling getting that identity. And he felt so humiliated because now somebody really saw his real living condition. So all of that we saw in school was because he did not like or did not feel significant at home. So what he was doing was he was acting out in school, being loud mouth, yelling, you know, joking on others because he did not like his living conditions in his house. And many of you, you are following people. You are envying people on Instagram and, and, and people at your school. And you're saying to yourself, I want to be like them, but you have not been to their home. You don't know the condition that they're dealing with. And what you see in school is just a persona. They're just, sometimes this can be the way of acting out. And why I'm saying this is because the, if we don't deal with this identity and this significant thing, you're going to start chasing people and get your significance from people who don't even feel significant. <laughs> so what I'm trying to tell you is that the gentleman that I was following he had issues. The gentleman that I was taking my, getting my significance from, he really wanted to be in my family condition. The gentleman who I was following, he really would love to have brothers like I had and sisters like I had, but he was a, he was the only child and he had a condition that he didn't want nobody to know. And this is why he was so loud mouth and was doing all these external things to cover up what was really going on in his life. Why am I saying that in this, in this chapter is because many of you, you got to understand what the cause of this whole self worth thing. Your cause is, first of all, I mean, and, and let me bring another word in ignorance. You're ignorant of the fact of, of who, how valuable you are. You're ignorant of the fact that you are very significant. I do not need, I did not need that guy's approval to let me know who I really am. I thought I needed it. That's why I allowed him and his words and, and different things to define me. And guess what, guys? It's a lie. So whoever is defining you right now, whoever you're going to to get all your validation, you don't know the whole story. You don't even know what they're dealing with. Some of these people, and we just see, we're seeing countless people, they got the beauty, they got the body, they got the money, and they're still killing themselves. Why would a person who really love themselves and have self-worth kill themselves? It's because they are struggling in those two areas, identity and significance. And that is not something you can get externally. You got to get it internally. And we're going to talk about that in the next chapter. So remember, in this first chapter, I want you to think about those words, identity and significance. You got to get to the place where you start to understand that this is the root cause of your issue when it comes to self-worth, significance and identity. And in the next chapter, we're going to start giving some solutions and some things that you can start doing to get yourself rid of all this lack of self-worth so you can be everything you're supposed to be. All right. Hope you enjoyed this one.